Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for Megamania. Um, today, we are going to have a really cool video about creepy crawlies from um, my friend Susan with the I Will Projects and um, the IFIS project here um, right across the street from East High School. IFIS stands for Indoor Farming and Innovation Zone. It's a really cool hydroponic setup that they have in the garage of the house over there. Um, they've got everything from turtles and tilapia to feed their plants to peppers and bonsai trees and microgreens and all kinds of things that they're growing um, in that hydroponic situation. So um, there's a lot of compact information on this presentation today. If you're ever interested in learning more about that particular part of what Susan does, please give them a call. Um, we're going to have our Creepy Crawlies presentation now. I've not ever shared the screen with a PowerPoint before, so please <laughs> bear with me as we get this going. I don't think there'll be any issues, but you never know. Um, hopefully you guys just wait through our technical difficulties. Um, there was a kit that was a part of this particular program. You get to bring your, make your own uh, Creepy Crawly observation sucker rubber. I'm sure that there's a much more technical term. Uh, if you are interested in getting a kit and you didn't register, we still have some available here at the Rawlings Library. Just come on in and ask at the circulation desk for one of the kits that we have and they're kind of first come first serve. I think I've got about 10 left. Um, that's pretty much all the announcements I have for Maker Mania today. So let's go ahead and get started with the presentation from Susan. Uh, let me make sure that I get it going right. and. We'll be off and running. Bear with me. Hello and welcome. You're watching a STEM lesson from the I Will Projects, a 501c3 nonprofit based in Pueblo, Colorado. No sound. Okay, we are in fact having technical difficulties. Give me two seconds while I figure this out. All right.
All right. It does seem like I am really having some struggles here sharing my screen with PowerPoint. So what I'm going to try to do here is um, stop sharing and reshare my screen to see if that makes any sort of difference. It may, it may not. <laughs> we will find out. It's a very, very cool um, project that we have going it on does here. Seem like I am really having mute my phone, which is what I'm using to test and see if I have any volume. I really hope we can get it going. Again, thank you guys so much for bearing with me as we're trying to figure this out. I think I'm going to go ahead and just stay right here where you can see me and try to play the PowerPoint. There's a lot of good information in there, but I really want you to be able to hear Susan's voice. And for some reason, that's just not working. So let's go ahead and pull it up again and see what happens. Here we go. See if we can hear her. Let's look at how insects are shaped and put together. First, you're going to see that it has three body parts, the head, the thorax, and an abdomen. Of course, he has three pairs of legs, making a total of six legs, two antenna, and compound eyes on either side of his head. Insects pollinate plants that produce food for the world, so they're really important. As the populations and varieties of insects are starting to decline, we can note that it's been caused by air pollution, water pollution, habitat loss, extreme temperatures, and the spraying of pesticides. We'll see the reduction in our food supply if our pollinators are gone. Don't let insects bug you. They are so important. Check out this insect, a praying mantis. I located it in my garden last week. It had caught a juicy caterpillar and it was feasting away. Notice it has the antenna, gripping front legs, and chewing mouth parts. Very cool to watch. It's easy to see the segmented legs on this praying mantis. Check him out as he's using his mouth parts to clean off all the juicy morsels from that caterpillar. You can even see the wings on his back attached to his thorax. Yum, yum. Many insects have one pair or two pairs of wings. Look at all the varieties of shapes and sizes. You've got butterflies, wasp, mosquitoes, dragonflies, kitty did, even some flies. The variety is endless. Now let's talk about arachnids, otherwise known as spiders. Many people are afraid of spiders but they're so interesting and important in Colorado ecosystems. They eat a lot of other insects, especially mosquitoes, but spiders are food for other insects, birds, and fish. They have a distinct body type. Let's look at it. First is the cephalothorax. You can see it here on the left. Cephalo meaning head, thorax middle, fused together to make one body part, followed by, let's look over there, the abdomen. And that holds the lungs, the heart, and the reproductive organs. It's actually where the spider's silk is made. And the spinnerets, of course, are at the end of the abdomen. You can see on this picture that this spider, the long-legged sack spider, has multiple sing simple eyes. So it can see everywhere. And of course, spiders make the most beautiful webs. They're the weavers. But there's also spiders that make trap doors for insects to fall in, and spiders that are just chase and hunt. And finally, the third little creepy crawly creatures. You might recognize this guy as a pill bug or a sow bug. When I was little, I used to call them roly polies but these are not really bugs at all. 
These are in the crustacean family. You can see that it has many body segments in the picture on the right and multiple pairs of legs. Always the odd number of legs, but definitely more than eight. They're in the same family as crustaceans like lobsters, crabs, shrimp, and wood lice. Let's take a look at the diagram on the left-hand side. You can see it has a very small head, a long thorax, and a small abdomen, but still the antennas and two compound eyes on either side. I love to find these in the soil, but they're doing a lot of decomposing and digging around to aerate the soil. You can find them under rocks almost any day. Here's one that I found under rock. Lots of legs. Well, here comes the engineering part of our lesson today. We're going to be making an insect aspirator, otherwise known as a pooter. It has a funny name, but it's a tool that you can use to collect very small insects, crustaceans, spiders, that are hard to pick up with just your fingers or a net or some other device. So if you see the diagram on the left-hand side, you see that it has two tubes that enter through a lid and a container below that creates a very tight seal. If you picked up your kit, let's go ahead and get that out and take out all the parts. Here are the parts. First, you have a collection jar. The clear tube in which where the bug will go in, the orange tube is where you inhale. We're going to use these other pieces, the tiny rubber band, and a half inch square of old pantyhose as the gauze. So, first of all, take your pieces and parts out of your kit, and we're going to push the orange tube down a bit so that we can work with it. You're going to take the small piece of the pantyhose and stretch it out so we can get it around the end underneath the lid. Place it over that orange tube and then attach those tiny rubber bands. A little bit tricky, just take your time and cross it over and make it so it's tight and attached. If the rubber bands aren't working for you or they break, Use a nice piece of tape, strong tape if you have it, to connect that pantyhose to the orange tube. Hands are a little chubby, but I got it on there. Now you're going to push that orange tube back up so you can use it to inhale. Push the pantyhose up under the lid. Adjust it, and you're ready to go. Next, take your container and screw it on tightly. Make sure that you find the grooves that the lid goes on and tighten it up. That creates a little vacuum inside there. So when you're moving air through the orange tube, it actually pulls air from outside of the clear tube. Now, here's a smashed grasshopper. Obviously, you can see he's too big to go up the tube. You're going to use this for smaller insects to be able to look at them close up, even if you have a magnifying glass in your container. Here I am in a household garden right in front of the beautiful trumpet vine. It has these nice green pods on it. I'm going to use my pooter to collect some very tiny ants that are working hard to collect the nectar. I got one in my jar. There he is. Here I am trying to find some creepy crawly insects, spiders, and arachnids in soil, under rocks, and under vegetation that's on the ground. It takes a little practice to find it the insects and use your pooter. 
I would even suggest practicing at home on your kitchen table using a small grain of rice or some other small teeny object to see if you can get it into your container easily and safely. You'll be a pro in no time. Here's a close up of the things that I found in the soil. I was lucky and found a spider and an ant and got it into my container. They don't like each other very much. I should mention to everybody that once you collect an insect in your pooter, look at it through the magnifying glass and study it for a while, please release it back to nature. It has an important job in our ecosystem. My praying mantis is definitely shy in my garden. He said, excuse me, I'm eating here. He was giving me the stick cut. I'm glad you could join me for this STEM lesson from the I Will Projects. Thanks for watching. Keep tuning in for more STEM lessons. Well, that's it for this video. If you'd like more information about the I Will Projects, find us on the web, www.iwillprojects.com. You'll find information about the Indoor Farming Innovation Zone program as well. Take care. See you later. Okay, we got it to work. Yay! I hope everybody got to learn a bit about bugs and to those of you guys who picked up your kit um, that you guys have made your pooter. And for the rest of you, if you're interested in getting that kit, please go ahead and stop by the Rowling's Library. I think I have 10 left. Um, stop at the circulation desk, ask for one, they should give you one. Thanks for bearing with our technical difficulties. Um, Susan will be back, I believe, next week with another really cool project for us, and I will know what I'm doing, and we won't miss part of her lesson this time. Um, Susan, if you're watching, the mistakes were all mine, not yours, and thank you so much for a beautiful video. Um, and until next week, everybody, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep making. I miss you. Bye.